Hello guys. I want to welcome you to another thought stimulating aspect of Yami Sack farming. We have been doing quite a lot regarding Yami Sack and we have been asking so many research questions. Some are in the process where we have to update with time. For example, like what you are seeing behind me now. Uh, we planted some Yami Sacks on concrete and we are doing some cooperative study. If you have not seen that video, try and look at it. But the focus of today is not this. It's what you are seeing here right now. We've decided to arrange these sacks. But there is an interesting thing about this area that we have arranged these sacks and we intend to do some form of um, planting. Now, this aspect of my farm is usually water lodged. If you can observe, you see the dependent area more like so I'll just put in the clip right now where you see the flooded um, area, this flooded area during the um, rainy season. So let's look at that. So, I haven't seen this area during the um, rainy season. I thought to myself, I know that yams need water to an extent, moderate amount of water. But the research question that we want to answer, if I have an area that is flooded, is it possible? Because it may be difficult to grow yams around there using hips but since planting yams in sack is another alternative of planting yams, is it possible that when i plant yams inside sacks in a flooded area it will do well that's the question we need to ask ourselves because if that becomes true it means that we'll be able to at least to an extent reclaim some space from the flood for us to plant yams in sacks it means we'll not be afraid if we are planting yams in sacks in a flooded area. So that is why I've decided to set up this experiment. I have several bags, different types of sacks. We are going to be looking at them now. We have already filled them with soil. Uh, of course, the soil I decided to mix with uh, sawdust in order to to improve drainage since this area is usually water lost that was just something i thought of now i have two major types of sacks here now there is this sack it's usually not it's not really a breathable sack per se because it's the it's kind of waterproof in a way but because the bottom, I open the bottom and of course the upper compartment. So to, to an extent, the root will still be able to, to, to escape and breathe. But the interesting thing is that it is waterproof. It's not really a comparative study, but somehow there will be an element of comparison. It's just for us to see. It's more like an observational study pilot. Let us see what will happen. It's not a breathable bag per se. Water cannot penetrate in here. Then, this is just one set of sack. The same thing with this. But, if you look at this one, this one is porous. It's breathable. So, at the end of it all, this whole, this line here, one, two, three, four, even the fifth one, the five, there's another one, there's six. They are porous, they are breathable. I also want to plant hams in them and just observe what will happen. Will they do better than this one? <laughs> so it's not a perfect arrangement, but it's something that at the end of it all, we'll be able to know what happens. So apart from that, I also did something else. I like this golden penny bag because as you can see, it's very, very big. Uh, it's the biggest here. So I decided to just put it here so that we also have an idea. And it is, of course, it's not uh, porous per se. It's not the first time I grew a very large 
tuba. It was from this sack I harvested. It was very, very big. Now, this one is here. It's not porous, but it's big. But again, there's another sack here. It's the bean sack. This one is big also. The diameter is bigger, you know, than this one. So this one is, the, is porous. So at the end, we, have, we are having two very big bags also. So, and they are, one is porous, one is non porous. And we have smaller sacks, non porous. And we have the ones that are porous. So, all of them here in this place that is going to be flooded with time. Once it rains now, it gets flooded, as I've shown earlier. This is this uh, same place. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to plant materials. I have various planting materials. Basically, I chose two sets of two sets of seeds. Basically, two sets of seed yams. Um, I would say two types of yams. This is what I am. Diascoria alata. It's already sprouting out with me that's broken dormancy, seed, which is what I always advise. Always plant yams that have broken dormancy. I will plant this. Then this is white yam, rotundata, that's correct, rotundata. I will plant this one. Of course, this one has also broken dormancy, so I'm sure that they will all germinate and all that. So I'm going to plant what I am, plant white yam. I want to see the one that will do to an extent well in this place. I might be very lucky, both of them, since this, they call this what I am, does it mean that it will like water? I don't know. Then this white here, I'm planting inside sack. What will happen at the end of the day? The thing is this, hypothetically, I'm thinking, see this place, water is pulling here there is a tendency that new trends are being watched from other places they are lost here will that improve the yield we don't know now maybe it will improve the yield but because here is usually water lost yams they don't like too much of water but because of the sacks that we chose which one will do better we don't know so that's why we just did everything. So it's mainly not a comparative, but then we might end up getting things that will make us do some form of comparison. But I want you to go on this journey with me because it will be an interesting one. We are going to be giving updates with time. It's going to be an interesting one. So that is why I decided to set this up. But if you have an experience in this aspect, you have done this kind of stuff around your area, Please try as much as possible to reach out to me because I want to know what you have discovered. But please take note, all the sacks, I opened the bottom and you know that I'm an advocate of that. I will always advocate that. Opening the bottom will help the roots to escape so that at least to an extent, they'll still be able to assess nutrients apart from just the one you are putting inside the sack. Just recently, someone sent me a video where he uh, cultivated yams in sacks but did not open the bottom and showed me a video of the roots you know trying to escape and he was worried so i laughed and i told him although that one was on concrete so i was telling him this is the reason why i always advocate that the bottom should always be open for us to be able to get better yield we have done a comparative study about planting in concrete that's what we are that's what you have here here, of course, you see they are already doing, they are already doing well. These ones, the bottoms are closed, and those ones, they are on the platform where the bottoms are opened. Basically, you understand. These ones are, okay. These ones, they are on the platform where the bottoms they are opened. These ones, all the bottoms they are closed. They just started. They are barely two months, but at the end of it all, let us see what will happen. Well, I decided to also do something interesting. This is an old basket from market that they discard, so I decided to use it for something. 
This place is concrete, actually. Concrete. So I've, I've, I've planted here um, soil in basket, planted the arms on concrete. So you are going to follow us so that at the end of it all, we'll see the one that will come out well. So let's go back to our flooded area. All right. So this is what I am. This is what I am. And well, because of the, because of what I know of what I am, what I am will always grow sideways, you know, and all that. So I'm going to put one what I am here. I'm going to put one what I am here. I just covered. So I'm good to go here. Hopefully this will do very well. Here I'm going to put, you know, another, another what I am here so that at least I can compare the porous and the non-porous. Then for this one, I would like to put it on this porous one. So, so let me get other materials that I'm going to use to plant these other ones. All right, guys, we have finished planting, so we are going to wait for outcome. So at the end of the season, we are going to see how this area is going to affect the yams that we are putting inside. And that will help us to answer all the questions, the research questions that we have raised now. But we are going to be giving you updates as time goes on. So we have a lot of experiment that we have started. Please look through our videos as playlist to be able to see a lot that you will learn from and if you have something you want us to work on you want anything that has to do with yamisak you want us to review kindly drop your comments or you send us a dm using our number that is on the screen please endeavor to always support us by watching sharing our videos to all the platforms you can in fact, you are in and you can imagine, just share our video so that we'll be able to make more impact because the more people see this, the more they will know what they are able or capable of doing. We've talked about growing yams in baskets. We have talked about growing yams even in cartons. So make sure you look through our videos on planting yam in cartons and planting yam in baskets. And I'm very, very sure you'll be able to get something from those videos. Thank you so much and God bless you.